I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you by Go to Meeting with HD Faces. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And with the height of laziness, I'm doing it from my living room again in my easy chair. Yes, and that's because I'm just not motivated to do anything else. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's look at some of the items this week. I actually have a lot of cool items this week uh, in the blog. I have my tablet here so I can read it off the tablet and not have to constantly be playing with the laptop here. By the way, this is my laptop. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about that. A couple of things. First of all, I'm using the Logitech 910 C910 webcam here on my laptop. And my laptop is now running Windows 7 again. Now you say, Dr. Bill, I'm shocked. Shocked, I say. Yes. Well, that's, I understand your shockedness because I am as well. However, it's not because I've given up on Linux at all. I still prefer Linux. It's just that next week I'm going to be in training uh, at work for Improvada, which is a single sign-on product that we're implementing there at work. And uh, Improvada only runs on Windows. And in class, we have to install it locally on our system. And they said, bring your laptops. And I went, my laptop's running Linux. So of course, what I had done is I had acronised my uh, laptop from its Windows 7 state back in November of last year when I went to uh, Linux and I was able to do a restore. So I restored it back to Windows 7. Now I say all that to say this. Uh, of course I had to do all kinds of updates. I had 68 security updates to do. I had all my software had to be upgraded, including the Logitech camera software here. Uh, and I'm using the Logitech's, the camera built into the Logitech itself to do this netcast. I was actually impressed that it sounds pretty decent and I don't have to wear a headset and I don't have to do any special other things I just use the built-in stuff so that's kind of interesting it'll be interesting to see how this turns out if the audio is not as good as it has been you'll know why because I'm using the built-in microphone just as a fun experiment yes so there you go uh, now, rest assured, I will be going back to Linux as soon as I get through the classes, but classes are a whole week next week, and so there you go. Alrighty, let's look at, well, first of all, a couple of things. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon and, and all the other great podcasts and netcasts that are out there on techpodcast.com. Go check them out. Good stuff. Um, now, let's look at the blog. The blog, of course, is drbill.tv, drbill.tv. And uh, that's, of course, the video netcast is the impetus for the .tv extension. Uh, a Microsoft iPad. This coming Monday, as I record this, would be June the 18th. Microsoft is supposed to announce their own tablet, a Microsoft tablet. How weird is that? Now, the real question here is not whether, well, we still don't know for sure they're going to announce a tablet, but we assume they are. Uh, the real question is, will they be running Windows 8 on that tablet? You would assume they would since they've been working so hard to make Windows 8 tablet-y, <laughs> tablet-like. Uh, however, some folks are saying that they may be running the Windows Phone operating system on that particular system. So, that's kind of odd. Um, let me shift some things around here. 
so that I can move a bit. I was at a very odd and uncomfortable place there, so I had to shift around. So I'm sorry for rocking your world. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know how you get that kind of crick? Sometimes you got to do something to move. Well, there you go. Uh, so anyway, a Microsoft iPad. And they're saying it might be running Windows Phone interface. I find that odd. But then I find most things that Microsoft does odd. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, they're going to talk about that on Monday. So we'll find out after Monday, won't we? Yes. Now, speaking of work, I was talking about work earlier. Um, one of our vendors that we work with through the place that I work is uh, Varro, the A R R O W. And Varro is a virtualization cloud computing Citrix EMC. They do a whole lot of high tech stuff basically. And the single sign-on project that we're working toward that I'm doing the training on next week uh, is mostly through Varro. So Varro basically invited me to Yammer some time ago and I signed up to Yammer uh, quite a while back. And uh, it's a kind of a, think of it as Facebook for business. It's kind of a social networking site for businesses. So I am a member of Yammer. You want to call it membership? I don't know if it's a membership exactly. It's I have an account there. Well, it turns out one of the items this week is that the business social site Yammer is being sold to Microsoft for one point two billion dollars. Billion with a B. Wow. So anyway, uh. Microsoft's buying a lot of interesting things here lately, and I think it's because they want to get into the business social market. And I'm kind of wondering if how that's all going to tie in with Windows 8. I think they have a plot they're scheming on there, perhaps. Also, talking about Linux a while ago. Dude, Skype for Linux is no longer beta. It has been beta forever. And it works, you know, fairly well. I've used it, you know, at work uh, when I was, you know, had Linux on my laptop and I was running it there. Um, but they have now gone out of beta. The light is shifting. I think we're getting clouds that are floating by out there and it's darkening everything up. It's very ominous. Everything just went and darkened. I mean, it's like a few minutes after noon. I think the cloud is passing and starting to brighten back up again. <laughs> You're going, he's giving me a blow to blow report on clouds. <laughs> clouds. Cloud computing, right? No. Real clouds. Fluffy ones. That apparently are blocking the light. Anyway, <laughs> Skype for Linux is no longer beta. Yes. According to the Skype for Linux blog on the Skype site, uh, they have now not only gone to beta, but they've gone to version 4 uh, Skype. And they have new conversations view. They have a brand new call view. They have call quality that's better. Uh, they worked on improving the video call quality and extended support for even more cameras. Dude, all kinds of cool stuff. So neat. Next item here. This is, oh, this is cool. Vizio. Vizio makes HDTVs, okay, among other things. But they're best known for their HDTVs and the fact that the HDTVs have really high quality for less money. So they got to thinking to themselves, what if we designed some computers <laughs> that were really high quality for less money? Yes. And so they did, but they also did something else really cool. And I'll put it up here in the corner corner of the screen uh, and that is the cool looking computers that they have dude 
These are awesome. They're very high-tech, cosmic-looking computers, and they're fairly inexpensive to be as cool-looking as they are. So, man. But anyway, uh, $900 to $1,100 respectively, which is still a lot of money, but they're awesome-looking. I mean, you would not go wrong in terms of coolness factor uh, by going with these computers. Whoa! Yes, Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week. You know, <laughs> that thing just gets annoying sometimes. Portable Start Menu is our Geek Software of the Week this week. Portable Start Menu is a system by which you can have your USB portable applications, the applications you have running off the USB stick, you can have its own menu system with this software so that you can quickly access those applications. Pretty cool stuff. You can organize and launch applications via the tray menu. You can close running applications on USB sticks automatically. Check out if applications have changed before execution, uh, etc. Cool. So check it out. Portable start menu. All right. Next item. Oh, before we do a next item, let me tell you about our sponsor. Our sponsor, of course, is Citrix Systems and their product go to meeting with HD faces. Now, I mentioned a while ago about Skype and how I've used that at work sometimes. Uh, a lot of times they have these uh, phone in things and I'll use Skype to talk to the folks on the phone that when they're doing phone you know meetings but think about having a meeting where you've got your HD webcam just like I do here this is an HD webcam a, a Logitech C910 and use the microphone built into the webcam just like I'm using right now but do this as a conference, as a meeting. That's what's so great about GoToMeeting, is you can actually see each other, you can talk, you can show your desktop, you can show images, and you can collaborate with one another. And the great thing about GoToMeeting is we've got a special offer that's available to you that if you go to their website, gotomeeting.com, and you click in their little, you know, uh, field there and type in the code word podcast podcast just like the lower third here says then you can get 30 days free trial on go to meeting awesome so take advantage of that right now go do it because it is a super offer and it's a better way to do a meeting i'm telling you those lame audio only meetings we've been having just don't cut it okay so go to go to meeting and check it out. All right. All right. Let's look at the last items we have for this week. And that is that they have built a prototype handheld device. This is cross posted from Handheld Hack. Uh, a prototype handheld device to translate sign language. Now, think about it. I don't know sign language. <laughs> and if you didn't know sign language, how are you going to talk to somebody that knows sign language that has to use sign language? Well, this device is handheld, and you can point it to the person doing the sign language, and it will speak to you, the device will, what it is they're saying with their sign language. And if you turn it around and use the camera that's built in, you can, uh, I'm sorry, that's the way you would normally use it, you know, to, to speak to someone, but then you can speak into it, and it will have a screen that shows the person the signs where if they don't have to read your lips, dude, it's like a translator for signing. That's awesome. So, uh, I mean, I've been fascinated by sign language for a long time. I don't know how to do it myself, you know, but I'm amazed at people that, you know, their fingers are just flying and they're talking to each other. And that's the one thing I wonder about with the handheld device. Is it going to be able to keep up with somebody that's really, really excited doing sign language? don't know but it's cool so a bunch of students designed it designed it designed it and uh, it's it's a really neat prototype device so check it out got a link in the article here 
Uh, and then the last item for this week, this one bugs me, is iTunes dumping podcasts. See, iTunes, I'll set this down over here. iTunes has been carrying podcasts for a very, very long time. And I got to admit, most of the people that watch this show are getting it off iTunes. Uh, they could get it directly from our RSS feed. They could get it off of Blueberry. They could get it off of, obviously, Tech Podcast Network, because we're a member of Tech Podcast. They could get it in any number of places, but most people are getting shows off of iTunes. Of course, we have our YouTube channel, but I'm telling you, if iTunes bans podcasts, and I, they're, saying, they're not saying they're going to ban them. What they're saying they're going to do is they're going to take them out of the normal iTunes and put them somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. Are we going to get the exposure that we had before for um, for iTunes? I, that bugs me. Apple, you're bugging me. So we have <laughs> Geek Wisdom, the Sacred Teachings of Nerd Culture. Haven't done one of these in a while. So uh, let's pick one at random. And, uh, no, let's not pick that one at random. I don't like that one. See, they not only have to pass the random test, they also have to um, pass the read it and it makes sense and is somewhat interesting test. Haven't heard of that one, huh? <laughs> this quote, you may recognize when I quote it, you, you've got me, who's got you? Yes, Lois Lane from Superman, the motion picture. <laughs> and here's what he says about this quote. People greater than ourselves do what they do with no wires and no safety net. Okay, they fly free, able to accomplish things that we not only can't do, but we can't even imagine doing. But this doesn't apply to those who perform astonishing feats of daring do. Think of a parent, perhaps your own, maybe a single mother, maybe a struggling couple. On a daily basis, they swoop up beneath their children, holding them aloft, saving them from hitting the ground too hard when they fall off one of those metaphysical skyscrapers whose edge they hadn't seen coming. Okay. Quietly, parents are all supermen and superwomen holding up their Lois Lanes and Jimmy Olsons. And the same truth applies to everyone whose efforts support one another. Enter Lois's question. If all these people have got her covered, who's covering them? When it comes to the unsung heroes of the world, the answer is often, or too often is nobody. In the real world, we don't have a Superman of their own. In the real world, they don't have a Superman of their own. What they, but they persevere nonetheless, which make them superheroes by any measure. It's very philosophical, isn't it? Okay, and then the fine print. Wow. Super fine print. Superman the Motion Picture in 1978 marked the introduction into the Superman mystique of such concepts as the cold and sterile planet of Krypton in the comics that had been a colorful civilization. Yes. And uh, businessman Lex Luthor in the comics, he was a scientist. So, there you go. The sacred teachings of nerd culture, geek wisdom. Um, okay, that was a little lame. And it was a little philosophical for my taste. I agree with the sentiment, I guess. But I don't know. Anyway. So, <laughs> enough of that. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not sure if we're going to have a Game Master segment. The Game Master is currently asleep. I mentioned it was a few minutes after noon. He's still asleep. Because he stays up all night gaming with some guy in Australia. What are you going to do? So if he wakes up in time, we may have a Game Master segment. Which I'll add to the end of the broadcast. The netcast. But if not, it will be next time. So, I'll keep you in suspense. <laughs> and so not knowing whether or not we'll have a Game Master segment, I'll go ahead and say that the Doctor <laughs> is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.